Let us kneel down and pray, my dear brothers and sisters. Mighty Father who dwells in heaven above, Lord, we have come once more before your holy throne. We have come, Lord, to worship you, to learn from your holy writ, and to get instructions from above. Mighty Father, as I'm going to talk to your children today, I pray, Lord, that you can use me. I humble myself at your holy feet. We pray, Lord, that your precious blood that was shed on the cross should cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wash our sins away, Lord, though they might be red as scarlet, make them whiter than snow. I pray, mighty Father, that you cover us, mighty Jesus, with your righteousness, so that we can be worthy to be humbling ourselves at your holy feet in the most holy place. Use me, Lord, I'm just an instrument. Use me, my Father, according to your will. Do not uplift my name, but let your name be glorified, honored, and uplifted. Let your powers, Lord, be revealed now that we are at the end of the world. Let your work be accomplished. Humble me, Lord. I humble myself. Teach me thy ways. Teach your children who are watching, who are listening, thy ways, Almighty Father. You have chosen me to do a very, very big job, to lead your children in this part of the world. As I'm still breathing, Lord, let your will be done. If I'm going to be put to rest, let another one, Lord, be appointed by thee, because we do not choose ourselves, you appoint your servants. Humble your children, Lord, so that they can get the truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. My brothers and sisters, welcome. I'm so glad to see you. Happy Sabbath. I'm so happy to see everybody after a long, long time. We've been off, but it does not mean that we were sleeping. Just like our Savior, Jesus Christ, is not sleeping, we've been working. Uh, to start with, uh, let me congratulate uh, my brothers and sisters who are on the WhatsApp group. Uh, the group has grown. We are now almost uh, 600 of, our, of us on WhatsApp. That's a very big number. I remember at JH, there is a time that we had a discussion, discussion groups. And I mentioned to say, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be to blow the loud cry. We need to start blowing the loud cry because we are sleeping. And we need to preach the third angel's message, Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12. We need to preach the third angel's message. The two angels and the third angel's message. And and people rose. I knew that it wasn't them speaking. It was just the demonic forces that were working, you know. And people rose, supporting one another, one voice on top of the other, saying that we cannot be preaching the third angel's message. We cannot be exposing the Antichrist, who is the Pope of Rome. We cannot be telling the world about not receiving the mark of the beast because this will discourage some newborn babies. I said, what? Is that really true? What is our foundation as SDA Church? We were founded to be an Adventist church. We are waiting for the advent of Jesus Christ. And we have to blow the loud cry. And we have to spread the gospel, the first angel's message, to all the world that judgment has begun in heaven. Jesus is in judgment. And these people rose and challenged me. And I said, which message are you preaching? Which message should we preach? They all screamed on top of their voices and their lungs to say, let us just preach the love of Jesus. I said, how different is that message from the, the Pentecostals, the Catholics? How different is that message from the false prophets like Siawan, Bushiri, and uh, this Kagande, this one in Uganda that I'm going to talk about in another episode ahead? How different is that message? People are thirsty. I said, I've managed to spread the third angel's message to all the members once again, congratulations to all the members on the WhatsApp group. Almost 600. And our target is to reach the max of uh, uh, the quantity of number that the, the WhatsApp group can hold. I don't know, is it 1,500? Yes. Our, our, our target is to reach as much as we can. I know in a few weeks' time we'll be there. It will reach max. It will be done. We'll have, we, I told them we have surpassed the church. The church has 400 people on the WhatsApp group. With the same message of the love of Jesus, you are even failing to spread the gospel to all the corners of the world. The gospel has to spread. The Holy Spirit, according to Revelation chapter 18, will be given to us at the 
outpouring of the latter rain. Uh, the outpouring of the latter rain will be assisted. Ellen White's Spirit of Prophecy says that we are whispering right now. But the whispering, the loud cry has begun. It will swell at the passing of the National Sunday Law when we are going to re receive the outpouring of the latter rain of the Holy Spirit to aid us in this job. So this job is spiritual. This job is not a physical job, my dear brothers and sisters. So now, uh, today we're going to address a couple of issues. Um, the, we're going to address uh, certain behaviors that are taking place in our church. We're also going to address state and religion uniting. At the end of the world, state and religion has to unite. Every, throughout history, it's been like that. Throughout history, in the Reformation, it was like that. State and religion united. Remember, state and your religion united in Babylon when uh, Babylonians were forced to bow down and worship. The Antichrist of that time was to worship the idols, and Shadrach, Mishkan, and Abednego refused. That was state and religion. State and religion united once again in AD 70, a Titus siege of Jerusalem. We had uh, almost a million, more than a million people who were killed, uh, uh, Israelites who were killed in that destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. That was state and religion. Again, in 538 AD, we know that state and religion united when uh, Justin was converted to become Roman Catholic and the Catholic ruled the world. As they ruled the world from AD uh, 538 all the way to AD 1798, they were killing Christians who never uh, complied to obey the man-made force uh, Ten Commandments, where they changed the Ten Commandments of God, which are immutable. The Ten Commandments of God that were written with his finger on two tablets of stone and given to Moses on Mount Sinai. The Catholic changed them, deleted the second one of idolizing, that is when they introduced idols in their churches, Virgin Mary, the other ones are called St. Joseph, St. John, and people, 2.5 billion people bow down to those idols. And when they did that, they also changed the most important of all the Ten Commandments, which is the Fourth Commandment, the Sabbath Commandment, because it is the only commandment that God tells us why we worship Him. It's the only one. And you see, I've been preaching to people, I've preached to almost 4,000 people, papas, pastors, and reverends. I, I ask people, simple question, why do we worship God? It is written in the Bible. It is written, Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. It is written, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, the fourth commandment. It is written, it is because he's the creator. It is the cre he is the creator of the heavens, the earth, and the seas. And that is the third angel's message. The three angels' message. The first angel talks about worshipping God. Because his judgment is set in heaven. Worshipping God. Because he's the creator of the heavens, the earth, and the seas. That's the first angel's message. And judgment has begun. So God is the judge. Today we're going to talk about state and religion uniting. Now where we are, things have started happening, my friends. Things have started happening and where we are worshipping from at our church, we are seeing these things. I'm not going to name people. We'll give somebody we're going to talk about today a nickname, right? I think we, we can do that so that we do not jeopardize his job reputation because he idolizes his job. But the devil is using him. The devil is using him and his colleagues. I can call him, I can call them his fluffies. This is now state and religion coming in, taking over. Before Titus sieged AD 70, they were surrounded. The desolation of abomination as was warned by Jesus, happened, and yet the Christians were sleeping. Ellen G. White, the prophet says, no Christian was killed in the siege of AD 70, but a million of them were killed because of not wanting to listen, not taking heed to the warnings, and not studying prophecy. Studying prophecy is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters, because all the Christians in AD 70 knew that this is the desolation of abomination happening. The siege, we are being we are being encompassed. We are being surrounded by the Roman Emperor and the Roman armies. And they flee to the mountains. Remember that 
So that messenger who Christ sent for seven years, he was warning them. That was prophecy. He was reminding them prophecy as we are doing. We are reminding Israel, the current Israel, which is equivalent to the ancient Israel, which does not listen. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, we have infiltration in our church. We have top officials who have been sent in our church. I'm, I think we will just give him a name. General Museveni, is that name fair? We have top officials who have been sent in our church to bring, to accelerate the state and religion combination. I remember when uh, 20 years ago when I was uh, doing my four years in East Africa of, of my university, there was a classmate from Sudan. His name was Caesar. He was also doing economics like me, Bachelor of Arts Economics. Caesar used to tell me stories about Sudan, about the war in Sudan, and why that war is taking long to finish, to end. The reason Caesar gave me was that state and religion is united. And this is the plan. You see, when state and religion in Sudan, for example, like Caesar said, unites, they want to force you to be all Muslims. They forced everybody, the Roman Catholic forced everybody to be Roman Catholic, to disobey the fourth commandment that they changed to Sunday. The whole of this Bible, the whole of this Bible, the most important of all the Ten Commandments, which is the Fourth Commandment, which was changed to Sunday, the first day of the week, and they even give funny reasons to say that is the day that Jesus rose. This whole Bible, no prophet, not even Jesus changed the Fourth Commandment. He actually warns us to say anybody who tried to change and teach so will be punished greatly. Will be punished greatly, my dear friends. When they did that, the United States with religion and started forcing everybody to obey a false Sabbath. A Sabbath that was made by the papacy. A Sunday Sabbath. A sun worship. This is what is also written in the book of Revelation. This is again coming back. They killed a hundred million of our friends who protested against this, including Martin Luther, John Huss, Jeremy, Wycliffe, Toko Farrell in France. Talk of Zwingli in Switzerland. All these Protestants were saying you cannot change the laws of God. You're just a papacy. You're just an antichrist who was talked about in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel was told that 500 years before Jesus was born, my dear friends, that in the future there will come an antichrist. There will come an antichrist who's going to try to change the laws of God, which are immutable. The laws of God are not changeable. But this individual, this blasphemous animal, the little horn, the wounded little horn, will try to change the laws of God. And they did it. They did it. We know that the first one to change the fourth commandment was Constantine in 321. We know that, right? And he changed it. And he even gives reasons. Some of these things, my dear brothers and sisters, you don't need to go to commercial library. You, don't, you have libraries on your phones. Google 321, Constantine changing the Ten Commandments of God. Changing and introducing Sunday worship. And he gives the reason. He gives the reason. You're going to find it on the encyclopedia. He gives the reason to say it's because of worshiping the sun. The sun god that has been worshipped for ancient of days. Since Egyptian times, Ra was worshipped. We had Horus, Osiris and Isis come together. They give birth to Horus, the sun god. We have Saturnalia. We were just talking about how satanic Christmas is. These pagan festivals were introduced into the church. And in 538 AD, Justin converted into Catholicism. They make it state and religion united. They started persecuting everybody who never observed the false Sabbath that was made to worship the sun god. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, in every Catholic cathedral you visit today, you are not going to miss the sun. And in every mosque you visit today, you are not going to miss the moon god. And yet Jesus, and yet God the creator, in the commandment number four, the one they have tempered with, the one they have stumbled on, and the one they have removed, says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. He gives a reason why we worship him. The reason is only one. Because he's the supreme. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He says, I am the creator of the heavens, the earth, and the seas, and everything in them, I did create in six days. 
and I rested, and I blessed the seventh day. Did he bless Friday for the Muslims who worship the moon god? Did he bless Sunday for the Catholicism which changed it to Sunday and say, let's worship the sun god? This is blasphemy. And the cup of iniquity is getting filled up. Very, very soon, my dear brothers and sisters, Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 says, and Michael is going to stand up. And Michael is going to close the books. And when that happens, it is finished, it will be pronounced in heaven. And there will be a time of trouble that this earth has never seen. Since the creation of this universe, my dear friends, we need to be alert. We are sleeping. And the SDA Remnant Church is the church that was given a prophet. Is the church that was given the mandate to spread this gospel to all the corners of the world. That is why our logo is the three angels message. And yet in the 90s when the Jesuits, when the Catholics entered, infiltrated their dead filth in our church, starting from the head office of Ted Wilson, trickling down to all the conferences and unions, the logo changed. The three angels message has been thrown in the dustbin. We are proudly carrying the upside down cross and the flame. This is blasphemy in the sanctuary of God. Now today, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to address these people who have been fighting me at church. You see, this whole year, 2023, has been a year of blasphemy. And people tell me, Happy New Year, 2024 is not a happy new year. It's a bloody year. It's a dark year. Because the Laudato Si' written by the Antichrist Pope Francis is in its maximum, in its climax. This year is a preparation year for the implementation of the National Sunday Law. You see, when the devil says he wants to implement it in 2026, he does not behave like a foolish person. The devil is not dumb. Lucifer is a very intelligent being and very cunning. He might bring it this year to catch 99% of us sleeping. He might bring it in 2025 or later 2026. So, we need to be alert. Speed of prophecy says the most important period is the preparation period where we are today. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, from history, Jesus always gets a minority. Jesus always gets a less than 1%. And Spirit of prophecy mentions it quite a lot. When you come to first, uh, a volume of testimonies to the churches uh, at 504.2, the spirit of prophecy says in first first volume of testimonies to the to the church is 504.2. It says less than one percent, less than one percent, not one in twenty will be registered in the books of the SDAs and testimonies 632.2. First volume testimonies to the church is 632.2 mentions it specifically to say SDAs, not one in 20 of the SDAs will make it through. My dear brothers and sisters, when I came across these two citations, and they are not only in these books, they are also in other books. Those of you who are reading Spirit of Prophecy, those of you who are serious, one less than 1% will make it through. Is Jesus today, Jesus yesterday, Jesus today, Jesus tomorrow? He's the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus never changes. We believe that Jesus never changes and God never changes. He was the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. So the Bible is the same. This book has been valid for 6,000 years and we are the finishers of this story, my dear friends. We need to concentrate. It's always been less than 1% that has been taken. It's always been. 3 million Israelites left Egypt. You can read that. It's written uh, 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 Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, 600 men. I know those men had women. We know those men, those men had children. Those women were fed up. So in Spirit of Prophecy volume 4, the prophet says 3 million, which is very, very true. A less than 1% of those entered Canaan. Only Joshua and Caleb. Two divided by 600 men. That is 0.001%. Look at Gideon, 32,000 soldiers to fight 123,000. 123,000 Amalekites. My dear brothers and sisters, 32,000 was too much for Jesus. He asked them to, to go home, those who were scared, those who were cowards. 
Guess how many went? 22,000. 10,000 remained. That's a big number of SDAs who are cowards. People who are sleeping today. That's a very big number of SDA elders and pastors who are snoring during the day. Sleeping and enjoying to be sleeping. You are cowards. You are dumb dogs. Isaiah 56 verse 8 and 9. You cannot back. You cannot back. Where are the watchmen? They are sleeping. Ezekiel chapter, Ezekiel chapter 32. Nobody is talking about the end of the world. And you scream on top of your voices saying, don't preach that such messages, only preach prosperity messages, only preach messages that talk about the love of Jesus. And yet people are starving for this. Yesterday I was talking to a Muslim lady and a, a, a gentleman. The man and the other day it was a Muslim lady. These people want to hear about how the Pope of Rome is an Antichrist. This prophecy that was in the Bible written is now itching in the ears of people who are not in the remnant church. And yet you, the remnant church, are tolerating these people who have been sent into the system to make you salute, to make you under their political government. You are being dragged because you are cowards. You are scared. And 22,000 of Gideon soldiers went back home because of being scared. 10,000. Again, Christ told him, no, this is too much. Take them to the river, let them drink water. Those who were gluttonous, drinking water as if they are Muslims, bowing down, dipping their heads in the water. They were so careless. But those who were lapping were the ones to remain. Because they were alert. They were not sleeping. They were not sleeping. So we have two problems. Only 300 remained. 300 out of 32,000 soldiers. Again, do your mathematics, my dear friends. 300 divided by 32,000 is 0.001%. Always, it's going to be less than 1% on Christ's side. So shall it be, says Spirit of Prophecy. At the end of the world, it will be less than 1% of SDA in the remnant church who will be ready to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, who will be ready to blow the loud cry, who will be soldiers that are going to be used. There will be no cowards. 22,000 went. There will be no sleeping ones. The way you are sleeping and you are enjoying sleeping. You see, you've been sent. These are people that you don't even need to ask. You can see the errors, but because of being cowards, you are swallowed. As elders and pastors. These people come into the church, give you commands. They go on pulpits with short-sleeved shirts. They go on pulpits to show us their muscles. These are people who are on pulpits with a bunch of security guards with guns and pistols and knives in church, working. You know, I used to tell my wife, let's not make our maid, our house help, to be working on the Sabbath. That is a sin. How do you honor the Sabbath when you're breaking the Sabbath? These are the things that made me stop going to church when I was in the campaigns. When I was in the security team to make our president come into power today. That time I was lost. I stopped going to church because I couldn't combine the two. How can you be in church in the morning and in the afternoon you're at a political rally? How do you do that? And these are the people you are rallying after. You are being told, go and announce on the pulpits every Saturday, parallel meetings. You are flying up and down, you are excited, you are gluttonous. You know gluttonous people? These two. The test that will come at the end of the world is gluttony, food. We love food. I've been telling you I rejected the job, a job offer of 100,000 kwacha. That was a test for me, for me to give up this faith, for me to stop preaching, for me not to be used as an instrument of Jesus. Very high personnel came to me to tell me to stop preaching, to stop preaching because I'm disturbing the Jesuits and re revealing their dirtiness, their secrets. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I'm pleading with you elders in our churches. Jesus, right now, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, the shaking is on. The shaking is on, and spirit of prophecy, the prophet says, the falling will be great. It will end at the passing of the national sun, the law that can come this year or next year. My brothers and sisters, you are being shaken out because you are puppets. You are taught to salute to people who are blasphemous, people who are worshipping Lucifer. This, this man went around calling me a Davidian. You see, we have a sermon about Davidians. I condemn Davidians. We're not Davidians. 
I have a full sermon. That sermon has got a lot of views and criticisms. The Davidian head, the leader of that church called me, talked to me on Sunday morning while, he, while he was still sleeping in bed. And he said a lot of bad things. I said, I can't, I can't, I can't stop it. You are blasphemous. You are Davidians. But you go around because you want to dent in my name at church. You are bringing state and religion in combination. You are being a bully. You are bringing state and religion. You are calling me a Davidian. Just last Saturday, is it the other Saturday? You went around saying you want to kill me. You are going to kill the leader? My dear brothers and sisters, you are killing a dead man walking. I don't come with bodyguards and with arms and bazookas and knives, highly trained professionals, sophisticated people with gadgets who can tap your conversation here and there. You know, you are highly trained assassins. I do not need bodyguards. I do not need bodyguards. None of my friends was moving with bodyguards and, and paying those people huge sums of money, employing people and making people work on the Sabbath. And none. Did John Hass have bodyguards? Did John Hass has militias? You have camp meetings, you surround it. You know, you are being surrounded and you are ignoring it and you are laughing as if you're fools. You wake up, my dear friends. Wake up, my dear friends, as we are there. The day I will die is the day I will breathe. What will be different from me and John Hass was put on a stake and burnt? What will be different from me and Wycliffe? Who was bent? What is different for me and Jeremy who was put in a dungeon for six months and killed? And the other hundred million people who we are going to meet in heaven right now, they are dressed in white robes waiting for us and we are delaying and we are being cowards. My dear friend, wake up. Those of you who are following blindly, you are excited. I see you singing on the loudest voices. You are mocking God. You are on the pulpit mocking God. Who told you to beat up people? Who told you to kill us? Which side are you on, really? We have two sides here. We have a side that said, crucify Jesus, crucify him. Those were elders and pastors and Dorcas women of his church. They crucified their own master and killed, cut Isaiah into half, threw Jeremiah in a pit. You know, you are killing your own messengers, people who are telling you about the third angel's message. You are hating and you are rallying behind these people because they drive big land cruisers and big benzes. My dear brothers and sisters, you are playing with hellfire. We're going to have a thousand years in heaven of judging you. And the fire that you're going to feel like the martyrs who have been killed in the Colosseums, being thrown to lions, being scorched on the stakes of firewood and burnt. They said, we are never going to accept the Sunday law. You change the Sunday law, the fire that is going to burn you Catholic bishops will be ten times, hundred times more painful than this one. My dear friends, we're all going to die, but we're all going to resurrect. Blessed are those who be in the first resurrection, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 to 18. And cursed are those who be in the second resurrection. The book of Revelation 20 explains it. My dear friends, you are all going to resurrect. You can kill me today, God will raise another one. I'll kill the leader. You went around boasting, shouting, telling people to bring the report to me that you're going to kill me. You are delaying. You are sophisticated. You are very highly trained. You come with guns in church. Kill me. You are people who can take me at midnight to the bush, slice me in pieces, and you have all the skills to do that. You have all the skills to do that. My dear friends, you are killing a dead man walking. I've been selected to lead this team in Zambia of present truth. And when my time comes, God will select another one. God can use stones. When elders are dumb dogs, when all the pastors are dumb dogs, God is going to use stones. You are puzzled. Someone told me your time hasn't just come to die. But then people said, no, that man spoke badly. I said, no, no, he's a colleague. I think he was just joking. It's true. But if it came from one of you elders, I would have known that the intention behind was to make me kill. Because that's your intention. You come to church, walking holy, announcing parallel meetings, you know, you hate people who you, in inverted commas, say they are lost. Where is it written in the Bible that you should hate those brothers who are lost? Chase them, not even, don't allow them even to eat lunch. Where is it written? Where are you getting these things? You are in delusions. The delusions that are written in the spirit of prophecy. 
God will send strong delusions. You will be like robots because you are not serious. You see, sin separates us from the love of God. The more you engage yourselves in sin, the more to, you allow these people to control your brains because you are idolizing their jobs. You are idol People condemn me. I've lost friends for rejecting that job offer. I've lost a lot of friends and family because they are idolizing jobs and people like this man I'm talking about. Museveni has been sent in our church. He went screaming around that his, goal, his target now is to kill me because I'm the leader, then the flock will scatter. Museveni has been on a mission. Museveni is worshipping the devil. And you elders, my plea and my message from the holy throne of Jehovah is that you elders, your time is running out because you are idolizing, you are worshipping a wrong individual. This is an individual who will be given the pulpits. People like Jesus were not given a pulpit. People like Isaiah, all the messengers of Christ, the truth will not be given the pulpit, it will be hated. I'm not given a pulpit. I make my own pulpit. And my pulpit is doing well. We have 600 members. I congratulate you people on the WhatsApp group. We have almost a thousand members uh, subscribed to YouTube channel, which was stuck at 20. At 20, within a short period of time, God is doing his marvelous works. The church, the whole church has been cursed. You only have 400 people on the WhatsApp group with that same message of Jesus' love. The third angel's message, people are thirsty for this message. Let me tell you, you are stopping the third angel's message in the pulpits, but people outside there, like the prophet said, most of my sheep are outside. The Catholics, the Pentecostals, and these people outside are coming to take your places. Immediately the shaking is done at the passing of the National Sunday Law, you are gone. Because anybody who does not receive the seal of God and the latter reign is lost forever. These things are written, we've been saying them, they enter these years and come out from these years. Your plans are to worship men who are given pulpits, men with high positions, influential positions, men who come with a battalion of security guards on the Sabbath with guns and pistols and knives and the money, with gadgets to tap our conversations, men who break the Sabbath, he's on the pulpit in the afternoon, he's at an airport saluting saluting to his superiors. These people have been sent in the system to make you worship them. You are being surrounded like Titus did in AD 70, and yet you do not want to be woken up. My dear brothers and sisters, we are not fighting flesh and blood. We are not fighting flesh and blood. We, you see, I don't need bodyguards. I don't need security. Why? Did Jesus move with bodyguards and pay them even on the Sabbath day? breaking the Sabbath and yet being honored by pastors and elders, you are lost. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says it, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Ephesians 6 verse 12, but against principalities. These are the ones, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts in, of wickedness in the heavenly places. We are not, these people are bloodsuckers. These people are worshipping Dagon, Lucifer, and you pastors because you want promotions. You want the favor and the love of the many. You want to be popular. Facebook pages, popularity. You are worshipping and you are bowing down to these idols. You are idolizing these people. My dear brothers and sisters, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. The next time I come here, I'll be, if it continues at church, this behavior of listening and saluting to nonsense, this behavior of listening to anything because this man is rich, this man is rich and is influencing all these to my elders who are upcoming, they want promotions, good and regular standing. Spirit of Prophecy says nobody who will be in good and regular standing will be given the latter reign. You are missing it and yet you are stubborn. You are stubborn. If this continues, of whereby now you are planning all devices to eliminate people from coming to church, is that your church? That is God's church. That is a hospital. That is a hospital. That is where people, I'm supposed to bring, I bring I'm bringing people there. It's hurting you. You're not doing your job because you are not having the Holy Spirit. You are having the evil spirit. 
coming through these influential Musevenis who are spreading it to you puppets and you are worshipping. Be men for a difference. My sons know that I'm a man. I'm proud of my son. I want to mention Edwin, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is eight years old. Because of this, I'm not with them. God has chosen an Elijah to go. I'm in the field. My children understand. I've told my children I'm a dead man walking. I've told my children any time I can be dropped dead as a martyr of Jesus. They have been. Can you imagine telling an eight-year-old child that? What about you cowards? You have big benzes, big cars, which I have rejected. And this same seven he followed me, followed me at church. Uh, you know, I didn't want to speak about you. But because you went around saying you want to kill me. So let me start hammering you bit by bit because we need to expose you. This is what killed Isaiah. He was exposing these, these demoniacs. This is what killed Jeremiah. This is what killed all of the prophets, including Jesus. John lost his head for being blunt. And you want us to come soft. To come soft. No, 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 no. Mostly when you take another step, when you take it every Saturday, you are coming to fight messengers of present truth. Every Saturday you are coming to fight those who have the third angel's message and you are damning dogging all our pastors because you have influential positions. State and religion is uniting, my brothers and sisters. This is a man who came in front of the others to tell me to stop preaching and report for work at his office. I told him, no, 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 no. You can't employ me. You, the one who employed you is the one to employ me. And that annoyed him. That same day, he called a board meeting. Church pastor involved everybody. And four of our members were called. Two recanted. Two were cowards. But two stood brave to say, we are seeing nothing wrong. You have not convinced us. Because that man is not a Davidian. That man is preaching the third angel's message. He's promoting LNG White. This is a man who's controlling. Stop being controlled. I'm going to end it here today. Revelation 14 verse 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Those who keep the commandments of God, number one, including the Sabbath commandment, not the Sunday for Sabbath. Number two, Revelation 14 verse 12 is saying, and the faith of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy that the prophets have been given to direct us to the bigger light. My dear brothers and sisters, let us wake up. We do not have time to waste we do not have time to be in second. We are being in second. We are being trapped. Let us get out of the trap. Like in AD 70, the real Christians, Ellen White said there is no single Christian who died. <clears throat> but you are going <clears throat> in the path of death. Because you are accepting to be sieged. Titus is back. Titus is in our church. Titus is targeting to kill me as a leader. I'm saying he's wasting time. Let him do it. Because God will raise another one. On my place. Trust me, the mission of God will not be stopped. You are too little. You are too little to stop the mission of the Almighty God. This time, Jesus is winning the battle. This time, Jesus is winning the battle. We are waiting for you to kill me. We are waiting for you to achieve it. You are very sophisticated. You are assassins. You are trained, highly trained people, sophisticated people with gadgets. You control Zikta. You control communications. You can see. Apart from that, you use demonic planes. You know those aeroplanes they used to fly on? And now you are controlling elders. You have zombified them. They are zombies, eh? <laughs> Blasphemy in the sanctuary. Singing, fattening themselves. Singing, eating the money, enjoying You are feeling it. You are enjoying it when you are fighting people in church. Where? Did Jesus fight people? Where did the apostles fight people in church? Where did Martin Luther? Where are you getting these things from? You are like Muslims. Now you want to kill people who are not believing in your faith. Exactly the end of the world. This is the end of the world. The end of the world is to kill those people who will not unite to one world religion. Who will not join the house of one. All of us will be hunted like wild animals. We will be in the mountain caves by the time Jesus appears in the skies. Don't be cheated by these pastors who are saying Jesus will find you in big land cruisers and big aircon offices. N nothing like that in the Bible. Nothing like that in the spirit of prophecy. We will be hunted like wild animals. And the hunting has begun. Museveni has begun it in my local church. Museveni has brought militias in the church. During divine service, Museveni is in short 
muscle t-shirts in the pulpit, Museveni is announcing that now he's coming to kill. We are being sieged. My dear friends, we are being sieged. Let us watch. Let us be vigilant and let us not be cowards. Dear elders, I know not all the elders. I know them. But the majority of you, and mostly the young ones, they are excited. They want to, to, you know, to be promoted, to be ordained, and to have... And you, you can't understand the love of money. Mrs. Lot became sought after trying to escape, but because she was attached to the love of money. Lot was a rich man. My dear friends, detach yourself from all these idols. When the Catholic removed the second commandment of bowing down to idols, it's not just concentrated with Virgin Mary and those idols in their churches. No. These elders, these Mosevenes, these militias you are worshipping and you are saluting to, they tell you, dance, you dance. Scream, you scream. Sing loud in church as if you are so excited. Go and announce parallel meetings. Beat up people. You are following commands. You are gone. You are gone, my dear friends. Let us meet again. We are just beginning our year. We are going to be rebuking, reproofing, and correcting. John the Baptist and the others lost their heads for this and Paul. Who are we? Who are we? We don't have bodyguards. We don't have militias. I don't need those. We are not, we are not fighting a physical battle. But when God permits it that my time is up now, like Paul said, when they came and said, Master, his, his followers came and said, Lord, our, 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 our Master, they have come. They have come. And Paul said, I fought a good fight of faith. And they chopped off his head. When you're going to accomplish what you have been announcing, that you want to kill me, let it be done. Let it be done. Because you, have, you are killing a dead man. I don't even know what you're going to accomplish. Let it be done. And the Lord is in control. My dear friends, let us meet here. Let us have a good Sabbath today. Let us worship well. Let us know that there will be only two groups. One that will accept the laws of man because of they can't control their appetites like Gideon soldiers. They want to eat and then they'll get, like those who got the jab, the Babylonian poison. They wanted to eat. So shall it be at the end. Food. Food and passions behaviors, worshipping man, worshipping a man who has come with a bunch of thousands of soldiers in church with guns, worshipping men who are fighting the truth. And these presidents of, you see, there is even this one who was shooting selfies and videos at a, as it a beach, saying, I'm enjoying life, I'm very handsome. These are leaders in our church. Oh Lord, have mercy on your church. These are people with charms in our church, in high positions. Lord, have mercy. Cooperating with these charms, these people with charms from, from high institutions. State and religion is uniting. State and religion is quickly uniting. Zambia is a very sensitive country, my friends. Out of 20 million SDAs globally, Zambia has about 2 million. That's, I think, the highest in the world, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a very sensitive country. Therefore, let us be watchful. Let us be in the less than 1% that is going to be ready. That will reflect the character of Jesus. Only those, according to Testimonies, Volume 5, who reflect the character of Jesus will receive the seal of the living God. How are you reflecting the character of Jesus? Is it by beating up people who are raster men who come to your church? who have a, a different re religious belief, or even Davidians. I've preached against Davidians. I never said we'll beat them up. Now you, you want to kill them. Is that reflecting the character of Jesus? And the elders are following because they are your puppets and fluffies. My brothers and sisters, time is running out. Oh Lord, have mercy on your children. Have mercy on your children is my prayer. Let us pray. Mighty Father, Lord, have mercy on your children. Have mercy. Time is running out. You are about to close the books. And if our names will not be found written in the book of life, 
Revelation 20, verse 15, we are doomed, Almighty Father. Rescue these blind followers of riches, fame, and who want promotions. You are cleaning up your church, Lord. Rescue those little flock. Rescue them. For I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us worship well today. Amen. <laughs>